Welcome back to the Techie Blossom channel. I am Pratik Sharma and in this video we will first see streams and then see qubits from the block package. It's very important to get the basics strong. So do watch this video till the very end. Do not forget to hit the like button and subscribe the channel. The first package that is the base of further packages is block itself. The block package sets up the foundation for other parts of the whole library. But what sets up the foundation for block package itself? Well, you might have already guessed the answer. As explained in the previous video, streams is the foundation of this block package. Based on concepts of stream, qubit and block are formed, which we will cover later in this video. Let's consider a very common real world example that you use daily. In any social media app, you have a like button for a post. If your app is not reactive, then when a user likes a post, you would need to refresh the post by yourself to see if there is an increase in the likes count. Whereas in the reactive style, the count of likes increases instantly as soon as somebody likes it. Here the count of likes from 1, then 2, then 3, then 4 and so on is a stream of data, which is asynchronous as well. Now consider this function that yields incremental likes. Adding async star makes the function yield data. Here I am yielding data with a duration of 500 milliseconds. You should not say that this function returns likes because the return is one time and the yield is ongoing. So to make a function return multiple values sequentially one after another, make it yield the data. When a function returns a stream of data, you cannot hold it in primitive type of variables like int in this case. You have to listen to the stream. The value here is the one int value at a time that is yielded by the stream. Now that you are familiar with the streams practically, we can move to qubit. Qubit is an abstract class that extends another abstract class block base. And block base is the class that has a stream controller which is the core of reactive programming. The basic functionality of a qubit is to have to receive events in the form of functions, do some work on events and emit states. To emit a state, you will use emit function defined in the block base class. Let's create a qubit, call it likes qubit. Add block library 8.1.0 which is the current version in the dependencies and run flutter pub get command. For simplicity, we will add qubit in the same file where the UI is. Create a new class likes qubit that extends qubit. Specify the state that this qubit will yield, like int in this case. You will need to specify the initial state of this qubit like 0 in this case. Either pass it directly in the super and have an empty constructor or make it configurable with initial value being passed while calling. As you know, we receive events in a qubit via functions. So add a function liked. Now comes the important part that is processing the event. You can make API calls, DB calls or anything. We will see many examples in future videos but for this use case, let's just say we increment the current state that is likes count by 1. The state field holds the current state. After processing, you need to emit the new state and for that, we will use emit function. Now let's see how to use likes qubit. Instantiate likes qubit with an initial state as 0. Run a loop 20 times to like with a delay and print the state from the qubit. This would print 1 to 20. This is a pretty simple example, but in real world scenarios or any other use case, you might yield the same data more than once. Will the same data be yielded multiple times? So the answer is yes, we receive the same data 20 times. This is wrong and there is a way to avoid it. So to optimize it, instead of reading the state, you will start listening to the value change. Let's see that with an example. Use a stream subscription when you listen for the stream from qubit. You will print whenever there is a single change in value. Keep the loop as it is and after that just cancel the subscription. For this use case, when the like count changes every time, 
we receive same response as in the previous case. But when you call set with the same value multiple times, you receive only one state change. This is how optimized and this is how we will use Qubit in a Flutter app for performance, where UI updates are ignored if the current and the next state are same. You can also observe state changes in a qubit by overriding onChange function. Print the change and the output is a change object with current state and next state. And again, the change callback function in qubit is not called when we listen for qubit's stream. Just remember, this callback is called before updating the state. And this is how you observe a single qubit. But you can also observe changes happening in all the qubits in a single place. You can use this to add analytics or logging. First, create a class that extends block observer, override on change function here and print the change along with the type of qubit. And lastly, instantiate this observer and assign it to block.observer before any qubit is initialized, mainly in the main function. Observer here is a static field in block class. For this to run, you should stop and rerun the app. Depending on where you use super, the order of on change calls will change. Like if you use super as the last line of the qubit's on change function, then block observer's on change will be called before qubit's on change. Wait, we are looking at qubit and here I say observer is in block class. How is that related and how is it even working? We will see that in the next video, but just complete error handling for qubit now. If you encounter an exception while processing the event, you can add an error to a qubit. Call add error function and pass in the exception along with the optional current stack trace. Now you need to override the on error to handle errors. You will notice that the error is printed when the likes count is divisible by 5. To observe errors from any qubit in the app, you can override on error in block observer as well. The order of calling for on error is the same as for the on change function. And that is all you need to learn about qubit from the block package. I know you liked the video, so just give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. In the next video, we will uncover the block itself. I am deliberately not explaining block class in this video. Otherwise, we will lose the focus. So in the next video, we will see block majorly from the point where and how it differs from qubit. We will also see the advantages of qubit and block separately before we start to use them in Flutter. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.